Well, I've got an evening session just before your tea break. So I'll try to entertain you and motivate you until the tea break. Quick question, how many of you have actually um, any experience in the dark web or have heard of the dark web? Excellent. So we have quite a bit. How many of you would say that you're like experts in this field? Okay, I don't think so. Most of us can actually say that because it's really rapidly growing. So, first and foremost, there's many groups. There are those that still believe that the dark web is a myth. Let me assure you, looking at the case laws that we have today, it's not. These are just some of the examples that you can see from the United States Department of Justice as well as from the Europol, which actually reflects a lot of the cases. And you can see that it's growing. One of the things or one of the perceptions that are there is that it normally comes back to its drugs or weapons or things like that. But what I'm actually going to be showing in the session today is that it also comes back towards individuals. It is something which is so easily accessible. And that is something that we need to look at in the sense that what exactly is the dark web? What exactly is the deep web and where does it go? So as you can see from this, it goes all the way now. The darker it goes, the more exciting the words. But basically, it comes back towards the same thing, hidden. That's all. It's all about hiding, and, and that's what all of us do. And the one, I would say, another misconception is that we tend to hide because we want to do something which is illegal. No. A lot of people are also using it just because they do not want to be tracked, they want privacy. They are not doing anything illegal. Now, how does that translate to you? How does that translate to an investigator? It simply means the more transactions, the more complexity, the more levels. And that is something that we really need to consider because when we combine that with cryptocurrencies, with all our virtual payments, with all the things that we actually have today, it becomes more dodgy. And on top of that, we have this, crimeware as a service. You know like how you have software as a service? Exactly that. So what happens is you just go onto those sites, I would like to order this, you pay for it, and that's it. Simple. You can order anything. And it's, some of it is actually free of charge. You get discounted rates. They've got really good packages. It's that simple. Yeah, and wait till you see some of the packages that comes along. But what I'm just trying to say is, it, this takes away that whole mindset of what we have been dealing with today in terms of crime. It changes our landscape, whether we are looking at a profile of a criminal or a potential criminal. It changes the profile in the way businesses are done. It changes the profile of how crimes are being committed. Within seconds, we're dealing with an international crowd. And whether you're looking at it from a local perspective, whether you're looking at it from you know, corporations, our legal loopholes are huge. We can have the best softwares, we can have the best investigation team, our prosecution team can possibly mess it up. Our laws can mess it up. And that is the issue. Now, some of the cases that I'm actually going to bring up are scary. Why? Because this would involve people that we know. One of the major areas is what? Child pornography. Imagine you put a picture of your child on any of your social media. The next thing you know, it's being misused elsewhere would you know? There are some very graphic pictures and I'm not going to show that, you know, but I want you to imagine that. Today, when I talk about my nephews and nieces, I will not put my pic their pictures online because I'm scared of the kind of people that are online. But then again, it's not about dealing with just, you know, small-time criminals or things like that. They are very organized. They have better technology than us, probably. They already know your own loopholes. They've already scanned through every one of your systems. 
antiviruses, cyber, you know, whatever that you have to protect your system, they've scanned through it. And they use a variety of ways to actually get to you. Now, I'm sure most of you all know better than me, right? How long does it take to hack into your mobile phone, especially if you're using a public Wi-Fi? Seconds. How many of us were doing that, especially during COVID? Even for me, it's like I'm so desperate when I landed here. The first thing I'm doing is public Wi-Fi. And I know all my details are going there. Now, so that is the question that you should be asking as well when we go through this. So this is something that gives you an idea which compares, say for example, organized crime with what you have over here for crimeware as a service. It's exactly the same thing. They've got levels, they've already got their hierarchies, they've already got you know, their agreements in terms of what needs to work, where they're going to get things. They've got better KPI and governance than us. They've got business continuity. So moving on, as I said, it's real. This is from the FBI website, 10, 10 million USD. I could use that money. <laughs> Likewise, this is another case. Now, this case with Networker, I actually used it because it came back towards ransomware as a service. And ransomware is something that really works and really happens. And now you have things like, you know, the deep fake videos and things. Just before, I'm from Malaysia, by the way, and uh, just before I flew here, one of my clients was actually doing that. They called me after two weeks. God. And then they tell me, someone impersonated their boss, got them to transfer out a certain sum of money, and then they found out it wasn't the boss, because everything is verbal, obviously. And after two weeks, they're asking me what to do. I'm like, all that awareness that we've been doing but it's happening it hits not just individuals like you and me it's hitting corporations it's hitting government bodies it's hitting everybody even the united nations got hacked right so everybody has the same problem so now the question will come back towards why do we have the dark web why are people actually utilizing it like what i said it's not just for bad or illegal reasons. People want privacy. Do you really like it if someone's actually tracking you? Knowing exactly, you know, what you're doing on your phone? What are you, you know, browsing through? No, none of us want it, right? We all like a wee bit of privacy here and there. But really, do we have privacy? The moment you go on Facebook and you put in a little search, next thing you know, what happens? You get all the funny looking advertisements, right? So where's the level of privacy? And that is what people want. So it's very simple, actually. You can use, uh, sorry, there's a bit of a typo. I just noticed that. Uh, like Tom, the onion router, or even say, for example, with the ITP. There's so many browsers now. And it's very simple. I've actually, uh, by the way, I've actually put some materials at the end for those of you who would maybe like to have access. Um, and so it will actually show you how to actually download what to do where to go and how to actually start looking for things. Now, apart from the anonymity and the encryption, we also need to understand that it's going to flow. It's a hot flow of information. So as experts in your field, as analysts in your field, when you're investigating this, connectivity is a major point. The moment that you have a little bit of a loophole, that is going to be a problem. So you need to be able to pick it up. Now, that is where, as I said, this changes the whole mindset in terms of criminology, in terms of everything in the way that we do it. Now, just to give you an idea in terms of what you need to consider. Number one, know the workings. It's not as straightforward as when we go into something, no. You actually need to monitor it for a long time. And some of the things that we need to really come back to is how are you going to connect that evidence? It's not as simple as just using one particular analysis or getting the evidence from one place. There's normally a triangulation. And most importantly, you need to make sure you're coming back towards a legal perspective. Different countries, different rules. And that's the biggest issue, honestly. I'll be frank with you, cryptocurrency. Some countries, they accept it. Most are still sitting on the fence. God alone knows when they'll fall off. But 
Yeah, and you know, it's bad. So those countries that, have, that are not embracing it, you may not have access. So how do you actually then deal with those kind of circumstances? You also will still go back towards your traditional way of investigating the typical mindset in terms of your chain of custody and the way that you actually present it in court. Now, just to touch on some of the things that they actually use, patterns. So one of it that they normally would use is basically coming back towards the NIT, the Network Investigative Technique, or in the UK it's also known as the Equipment Interference. So you actually can take a look at it in terms of where it's been used. And what happens is this, it's basically a very simple story. We have the exit, we've got the entrance, right, into the dark web. So once you're inside that, I can't, I can't possibly find you, maybe, all right? So what will happen is I wait for you at both of your entrance and your exit. So the moment you're there, I latch on something like a malware, and then it follows it follows you around. So then what happens is I spy on you. I spy on you, I pick up information about you, and then I later on will use that against you when I can actually finalize your details. So in a nutshell, that's basically it. You can, um, it, it's not normally used by itself. We can't normally just use it by ourselves. Why? Because it's great as a practical mindset, but to actually apply that is not as easy. So what normally happens is there's undercover operations or online covert employees. And what happens is this, you just need to be very cautious because as much as it's successful, what happens when you go into prosecution? We've got the defense, and you all love the defense because they ask funny questions. And their question would obviously come back towards every one of our protection and rights. Nothing wrong with it, but yes, it just makes our job a bit more difficult. So one of the things that they are definitely going to use as part of the line of defense is what? Entrapment. So we all know how you know, people actually look at entrapment. You know, where you trap the person into a so-called situation, they might not have reacted otherwise. So that's the question that you need to ask because there could be considerations of the violation of privacy and other things. This is one of the crucial cases, playback. From the word itself, you already know, child phonography. So at a point when it was at its highest, it had almost 215,000 members more than 117,000 posts, and it received an average of 11,000 unique visitors a week. How did they get it? They went back to the hosting company based on the information that they could pick up from that. They came up with a search warrant, and basically when they went through the forensic examination of his devices, there were disgusting images of infants and toddlers you know, being abused. So, anyway, what happened then was basically this. The FBI decided to take control of that particular site. They hosted it on their own website. That was issue number one, child pornography on the FBI website. And from there, they started picking up who came and who visited the servers and things like that. So from there, they were able to actually pick up the IP addresses, pick them up and go through. Where was the issue? The issue was because when they used the NIT, they also could not disclose it. So at a point, several of those suspects that were picked up were actually let go because of this one crucial point. They said that you can't use it as a prosecutorial tool and yet not disclose it. So that was one of the major issues. And then apart from that, the other issue that came about was where do you disclose or where do you issue the warrant? As I told you, within seconds, you're international. So who issues the warrant? And that's still something that is being questioned until today. While I'm all for you know, human rights, I'm all for our rights as individuals, but when you're dealing with crimes like this, it's a bit difficult to swallow. And obviously, as, especially when you're looking at beyond a reasonable doubt, and the doubt is already there. Now, this is another one, Hansa. 
I hear murmuring. Anyone who's got excited about this? All right, so for the Hansa, what happened was there was a tip-off. And in this case, it was from the security company that had actually found the Hansa uh, development server and they had recorded its IP address. And what happened was the Dutch police then contacted the web host. They got all the, the necessary access and started monitoring. So once they actually started monitoring, they found that it was linked to other sets in Germany itself. And because of that, they could actually link it to the perpetrators who were based in Germany. The typical digital forensic analysis was also carried out. As you can see, copies were made of the drives, including the transactions and conversation. So initially, they couldn't find anything. Their breakthrough came about when they found the chat logs on their IRCs. And these chat logs were the ones that helped because, because of those addresses, they could link it very clearly towards the Bitcoin transactions. So from there, what happened is using the mutual legal assistance, they raided the houses, they found the unencrypted drives, and from there, all the account details were handed over to the police. After 27 days, 27,000 transactions, they proceeded with the arrest and prosecution. And this is just at the point when they had the breakthrough. So it goes on for months, years, actually, to be honest, before they can actually analyze anything. This is another one. The reason why I'm showing this is, number one, to also show you that you can get a lot of information from the Europol. Also, at the same time, in terms of what it was actually used for, and most importantly, was this. The mutual cooperation. It took this many to actually bring it down. So there's a lot of development. I'm not going to say no. But we're still far from actually getting it right because there's so many ways in terms of how the dark web can be used. Now, this is just another alternative that I'm going to talk about. George Cottrell. Have you, has anyone heard of him before? Hmm. He's a member. Of, he's basically from the UK Independent Party. Politician, political connections, money laundering, um, bribery and corruption, you name it. So what he did was basically, he took on a money laundering scheme using Tor. From there, he got these guys, the so-called criminals, the drug traffickers, and started to bribe them and said, pay me this much. Unfortunately for him, these guys were under cow cups. And because of that, they picked him up. Disappointingly, he got away with, I think, less than a year of jail. This one was even more entertaining. So yeah, individuals. So in this case, a woman decided to get someone to kill off her husband. And there's many cases like this. It's simple, it's very, very cheap. But again, guess why was she caught? Undercover cops. All right. Again, uh, by the way, this is not something I'm concocting. Uh, this is, I think, from the Dep Department of Justice as well. You should be able to find it there. Liberty Reserve. Same case, money laundry. Why did they get off? Again, legal loopholes. Very same thing as well. And they got away with this for a very long time in terms of money laundering because of minimal documentation, the use of offshore banking, as well as the many layers that they extensively used. So you, as you can see from what I'm showing you here, the crimes that can be perpetrated is very, very widespread. The way that you're going to approach it is also going to be very different. It comes back towards the same mindset, but you need to be clear about how it's going to work. Here in Avalanche, they use a double fast flow DNS, and so they kept changing. So they also know, just like how we keep ourselves updated, they are even better. They are a few steps ahead. So these are things that you're going to be needing to pick up. Likewise, Hydra. This was more towards the Russian-speaking countries, but one thing that I would like to bring up here, false identifications. Theirs was massive, and it was very, very cheap. So can you see, at the point of 2016 to 2022, they control wallets from about 5.2 billion USD.
Last but not least, I come back to Malta. Anyone recognize him? Maltese guy. He was in Malta. And he left behind eight dogs. So I'm very upset. I'm a dog lover. So yeah, what happened was basically, in this case, as you can see, he was trying to buy poison. He was charged. Everything worked well. And he was sentenced to five years in prison. But because of the laws over here, they allowed custody if charged in the magistrate court. Right? So now he and his girlfriend are missing in action. Same thing that happened earlier as well in many of the cases. Because they were allowed this, they escaped and they disappeared. So again, you can get everything right from the beginning to the end and you still will have issues. So these are things that we need to look at. Now, another one, again, Malta. This time, they were going after the poor lawyer. Why? The lawyer decided, if you take a look at the second uh, paragraph, he basically did some transfers with the bitcoins, and so therefore, they were looking for the subpoenas in terms of getting the additional information. So it's not that easy. There's a lot of regulations, there's a lot of cooperation, especially here in Europe, but you need to actually pick that up. All right? Now, just to finish off, these are some of the things that they are asking for. They want the pertinent business records from Coinbase and Polonix, and as well as this chronology of events. So what you can see from these investigations itself is well, we have a choice as individuals, number one, to lose our sense of privacy or, you know, what's going to work. I'll ask you this question every time you get onto a flight. Would you like to know that a proper screening of passengers has been done? Or do you, would, would you think it's a violation? Same mindset here. You have no idea what information of yours is actually on the dark web. Whether it's, you know, your passports, whether it's your luggage tax, whether it's your credit cards, whatever. Every one of it is already there possibly. So, just to give you an idea, like say for example, this one has got a lot of the social groups up in arms. This is from Australia where they're looking at all these different warrants and account takeover power. So it gives ultimate authority to the government or to the investigation authorities to pick this up. This is where the legislations are going to be changing to. Now, having said that, just before I go into the last bit of my session, a bit of a disclaimer. You can play around with what I'm showing you, but please be cautious because it can also be held against you. All right, so in this case, I mean, this is just one of the cases where this poor guy gets raided by the police. Why? He just happened to be running the wrong thing at the wrong time. You have no idea who's going to be going through your platforms. So be cautious about these things. All right, so I'm going to end it by just giving you all some ideas. I'm not going to run through. For those of you who have no clue where to start and you actually want to download the browsers and things like that, this is a good place to start. All right, so they actually give you an idea depending on each of your browsers, what you're going to be using and things like that. For those of you who are looking at training, the UNODC also has one on investigations. The IACA also has a lot of search tools for the dark web, so they have one for marketplace, web search, social media as well, you can actually use that. You need to download the Tor and uh, a few other things for that. So there's a lot of instructions that you can use here as well. All right. Now, then you also can go into looking for case laws. One of the places that can give you a lot of information is the Department of Justice. All you need to do is Google or put in the search for dark web. Basel especially with wildlife trafficking, corruption, green corruption, organized crime. They have all these databases for investigation as well as for compliance and due diligence. 
So you also have things like, say, for example, PEP, politically exposed persons, if you want to do a check. Now, one quick question that I need to ask. What happens if I'm not in the database? What happens if I've not been charged before? Are you going to be able to find me? Tough one. It depends on which database. And especially for corporates, this is a major issue. Why? Today, when you talk about governance, everybody does what? Background check. Yeah, but guess what? Most of the time, it doesn't work. Why? Companies don't want to disclose fraud has happened. So what do they tell the employee? Please resign. It's better for you. It's better for me. So no one's in the, you know, that particular database. And that person continues to do it. So a lot of changes need to happen together with this dark web ones, because otherwise, you would get certain false positives, and that's going to be an issue. All right. Now, likewise, in the sense that this is from Interpol. So as you can see, they've got a dark web taxonomy right at the bottom. They've also got open source projects for the um, you know, law enforcement units. There's a lot of information you can play here with to as well. Finally, Basel. Again, a lot of information here. You can go and check that out. And these are some of the additional materials that I've put in. So, in a nutshell, just before I close off, I think I still have about 10 minutes. Excellent. So, in a nutshell, from what you have seen so far, it's complex. It's simple, but complex at the same time, right? Why? Number one, you may use one software, say for example, to analyze your dark web. You will then use another analytic tool, say for example, to analyze your blockchain or your bitcoins. You now need to make sure that you can do the connectivity. And typical with any IT investigation, what's the first thing that you need to look at? The integrity of your data. You also will need to check in terms of when you actually do the seizing of your digital evidence that you follow the typical forensic details. There's the chain of custody. You need to also make sure that all this is being put together as part of the report. Has anyone here been an expert witness or in court? Yeah, so excellent. So what's the first thing that they're going to ask? They're going to try to throw our reports out, right? So they're going to look for loopholes. And where's the loophole? Either your technique, the way you've written the report, or in terms of where those gaps are. So, of course, the technicality in terms of when you're dealing with a dark web investigation, as you can see, it gets very complex, especially if it's on an international front. Some of it have taken years. Why? By the time you get the permission, in, out, in, out, like the one even with Malta, you can see subpoenas, warrants. By the time they actually get it, the person's missing in action. Even with Playpen, the same thing happened. The magistrate courts refused to issue the warrants. These people could leave the country. And they're still not found until today. So we've actually got these fetal files running around just because of loopholes in all our systems. So that's basically something that we need to consider today, especially when we're looking at changes in the legal loopholes as well as the legal developments. So, yes, thank you very much. That's all for me. And uh, do you all have any questions?